all right so welcome again to military guna tv and thank you again for joining me so we're going to discuss two reggae boys i would call, I would call them historians <laughs> yes i would call them historians um written themselves in a legendary book of jamaican reggae boys um i would be discussing that in a little bit more detail um these two players are michael antonio and kemaru but before i get to that detail i would really really advise you guys to smash that like button and also hit that subscribe button people as you know still trying to grow the channel that's the only way it, it, it looked like the channel is going but we're still trying to grow the channel people so just hit that like button hit that subscribe button because it will really help the channel this won't be a long video though um so let's start off with kemaru first so um Rian just played against i can't even pronounce the name it's a it's, <laughs> um Vezda as the Vezda um Rangers played against the Vezda in the Europa League and um, they defeated the Vezda over the two leg um I think it's 4-2 on aggregate over the two leg um yes it's 4-2 on aggregate over the two legs so that saw Kemar Roof entered into the quarterfinals of the Europa League now with that being said this is now Kemar Roof made himself the second the second reggae boy in the history of Jamaican footballers to go inside at the quarterfinals of a european tournament or european competition uh, more so the first person who, 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 who did that was wes morgan with leicester city in 2017 when he played in the europa league i think he was the first jamaican to score in the champions league as well so i know we have kim Roof joining second in line um in 2022 mm, took a year a few years wow that's a few years it's five years <laughs> that's too long i do believe that's too long and it could have been more because i do believe that if shamar nicholson if, if sparta moscow had the opportunity to, to finish out their fixtures i do believe that they would be in this stage still waiting on draw um to see um how the team um who they're going to who um they're going um rangers will be playing against but that time will tell um unfortunately kemar roof only came off the bench for both games but in the same sense he still play he still contributed um to the team going through now let's move to the next player Mikel antonio now as you all could remember Mikel antonio was ruled out for um with an injury over the weekend he was ruled out with an injury over the weekend um so there, there was a strong chance that he couldn't feature in this game but Mikel antonio still turned up and put in a spectacular performance from what i've seen now that performance when Mikel antonio was coming off i think he came off in the in extra time the west ham fans was really really ecstatic with his performance now owing to the fact that it was mentioned that he might not be able to play and for him to give 120 minutes of football even though he was slated not um not to play and he still turned up and gave 120 football and he was one of the most vital player on the pitch he, the first goal that was scored it was his assist ha his hard work as well when he received the ball dragging the ball over to the left hand side and holding off two or three defenders and playing it to the back post who did he score i can't even remember scored first goal was it lanzini or, Bo or ben rama i can't one of them lanzini ben ramar four and I'm, i can't remember which one of them but he, he, he chipped the ball to the back post and hoping the, the the score sheet but for the entire night he was a thorn in the back of the 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 the, the, the severe defense he was they were playing against Sevilla, and remember that Sevilla is actually the godfather of europa league <laughs> Sevilla is the godfather of europa league and west ham turned up rolled them over and kick them out of the out of the europa league and that was solely due to the hands of michael antonio in the first leg michael antonio worked extremely hard they didn't get the goal last game to um one nil um unfortunately because a few opportunities was presented in the game not to michael antonio but to other players and they didn't capitalize on it but this time around um the, the, the sheer determination the sheer hard work got the team over the line now let me run through some of michael antonio's stats um Throughout this, game, throughout this game so he had a total of three shots one shot on target one off target and one of the shots was blocked um he had one chance miss 
So he has six out of ten dribbles completed. That at sixty percent, he was fouled twice and called offside once. He completed twenty out of twenty six passes. That is seventy seven percent passing accuracy. He made two um key passes in this game. He attempted two long passes. One was completed, so that's fifty percent. Um, he, he attempted um one cross and um, two cross. One was completed, and that, that out of two. And that's fifty percent again. He had a total of sixty-one touches, a quite a high, significant amount of touches for a game in which um, Sevilla had a lot of possession, but um, it, um, West Ham had a lot more dominance. And when they were going forward, they would just hit the ball long onto Michael Antonio. Ground duels, seventeen ground duels in counted in. As you know, he's a physical specimen. He, lo he likes to get in the, in in the dirty part of the football, and he completed nine of them. Um, we, he won nine of them, that's, so that's 52%. Um, eight aerial duels and he won three. So in total, that is 25 duels he encountered in. In total, that is a lot. And that he, 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 oh, he won only um, 12, um, 12 of those. So that's, that's quite a few um, amount of duels that he has encountered in. And I think pre pretty much a good amount. And remember, you only lost possession twice. You only lost possession twice, people. Only twice. Remember, you know, he's playing in a striker position. He will lost position twice in a game in which, at high intensity, um, defenders snatch it at his heel. The, um, that defender is uh, Jules Kunde. Is it Jules Kunde? My word, is a, that defender is a quality, quality defender. Really, really top class defender. I do think that um, he has a future. I do think he has a future. Um, uh, at a bigger club possible he do have a future based on what i've seen from juice kunde but what we're not here to talk about him so and I, back again i'm speaking about the two reggae boys so Mikel antonio become the third reggae boy to find himself on the history records of jamaican football registering um another place in the quarterfinals after west morgan after Kemaru, we have Mikel antonio so that's three players now in the books and we do have more players pending because the likes of Leon Bill is, is in a prime position to um to, to get into Europa League or even European Conference League. Um within the conference league, we also have Kemar, Shema um Shamar um, um Nicholson and that's Boza who will be playing I I hopefully in Europe at some at some point soon again. Um so we do have a lot of players playing in in, in, in Europe and I we do expect a lot from these players. But at this point in time, I definitely won't go any further. Congratulations to the two historians, um, reggae boy historians in Kemar Roof and Mikel Antonio in joining the big league. <laughs> the big league and written themselves, written their names in the big book of Jamaican football. Until next time, people, make sure that you smash the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. It's important, people. It's really, really important that you do that. Until next time, Military Guna TV, we are out. Boom.